Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now today I want to talk about the global gas <coughs> company and behemoth Gazprom. Now Gazprom has taken first place in the Russian list of the most unprofitable companies in the year of 2023. Now for 35 years the company which was the symbol of the money that Russia earned from its gas only ever generated profits for the state which is its majority shareholder. However, this trend has been reversed, well, at least for the year of 2023. Now, what factors contributed to Gazprom's unprofitable situation and will the company return to profits anytime soon? Well, Forbes magazine listed Gazprom as the most unprofitable company in 2023. I mean, that's after it's consistently generating profits for 35 years due to its exclusive right to sell Russian pipeline gas abroad. I mean, 2023 will be remembered as Gazprom's most challenging year. I mean, its loss amounted to 583 billion rubles, which is about $7 billion. Now, the primary cause of the loss can be attributed to the depreciation of its non-financial assets by 1.1 trillion rubles and the impact of exchange rate differences, which amounted to a loss of 652 billion rubles, which is about $8 billion. So effectively, we're talking about accountancy procedures and losses only on paper and not actual cash. I mean, it didn't lose money selling gas. In addition, Gazprom, the topmost three uh, unprofitable companies, were also the Amur Gas Chemical Complex, which hasn't started operations yet, so that's understandable. And that's been built by the Russian chemicals giant Sabir and the Chinese corporation Sinopec. Plus there's Ozon, which is the Russian version of Amazon, which keeps expanding, but like Amazon doesn't make a lot of money. So what actually happened to cause Gazprom reaching such losses and are they likely to occur again in the future? Well, Gazprom doesn't provide much information in the way of details in its reporting regarding the non-financial assets which were subject to the impairment. The company just notes that the impact was felt across its gas, oil and electric power businesses, including unfinished construction projects. Now, these are likely to be impairment of affected fields, gas pipelines and other infrastructure that were built and intended for the export of gas to Europe, says Sergei Kaufman, who's an analyst at FG Finam. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop them. You do this by clicking on the thanks button and making a small donation. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking all of you just for watching now. Now, it's obvious that the main causes, if you read into it, in 2023 with the write-off of all the assets that were illegally seized by the bandits in the European Union in 2022. Yeah, those same people who claim that Russia violates international law over the occupation of Crimea and the attack on the Ukraine, while well, they steal over 300 billion of Russia's sovereign assets. But any intelligent person knows that the EU are just puppets of the real gangsters, banksters and mobsters of the US. Now, if you roll up all the different seizures and the stealing of their assets, plus the blowing up of some of them, like the Nord Stream pipelines, it would appear that Gazprom has already accepted the inevitable and decided not to reinstate these assets on its balance sheet, given there's no possibility of regaining them. Although they might get some compensation, either through insurance for Nord Streams or through the courts for the illegal seizure of its assets. But both scenarios are some years down the line. So you could say Gazprom has effectively given up on Europe, but apart from the Turkish stream and the small amount of gas transit through the Ukraine, it's not really that bothered. Now, it's probable that some of the asset that it also refers to is Gazprom's share in the Polish company Europol. That operates the Polish section of the Yamal Europe pipeline, which shut down uh, by the Poles. Additionally, the Gazprom Germania, which had numerous Gazprom subsidiaries, was also arrested and then stolen by the Germans. I mean, Gazprom wrote off the value of these companies, which resulted in its large paper loss, says Igor Yushkov, who's an analyst at the Financial University of the Government, and he's a member of the National Energy Security Fund, so he knows what he's talking about. Now, 
negative exchange rate differences are mentioned in the report and now they're associated with the collapse of the ruble in early 2023. The situation was observed last year by any company whose foreign currency liabilities that exceeded their foreign currency assets, according to Kaufman. Now, Yushkov also highlights the 600 billion ruble increase in taxes that the Gazprom was required to pay last year by the Russian government. I mean, in 2022 and 2021, Gazprom got excess profits from gas sales in Europe. This is when prices went crazy from mid-2021 and were above $1,000 per thousand cubic metres. And in 2022, they went to several thousand dollars. So the Russian government wisely opted to take advantage of these windfall profits. However, they didn't do this through the normal channel of dividends, but in the form of taxes, which is a bit more straightforward and experienced approach. I mean, Gazprom was then required to pay an additional premium of 50 billion rubles per month, which is about $800 million in mineral extraction tax, regardless of the quantity extracted. And of course, the, over the year, it amounted to 600 billion rubles, which is, you know, well received by the Russian Treasury, states Yuskov. Now, the decline in revenue from gas exports to Europe also contributed to the losses. I mean, in 2021, Gazprom supplied around 150 billion cubic metres to Europe. In 2023, the decrease in supplies, and the figures stand at about 60 billion. Now, due to the continued high export volumes in the first half of the year, there was a significant delay in the September following the Nord Stream explosions. Then prices of the EU reached uh, unprecedented levels, and of course, they were effectively offsetting the uh, decline in volumes, more money for less gas. I mean, in 2023, exports fell to 27 billion cubic metres with a corresponding decline in gas prices although they did fluctuate from 600 to 3,000 per 1,000 cubic metres. Now, the situation with the European direction uh, of gas, with Gazprom, is similar to, yeah, I mean, two routes, Ukraine and Turkish stream. I mean, in 2023, Gazprom's revenue before excise taxes and export duties from all gas exports went down from 7.3 trillion to 2.9 trillion rubles. Now, the reduction in revenues attributable to more the decline in export volumes to the EU countries and the normalisation of gas prices. Well, they're not actually that normal, but, you know, it's normal-ish. Now, in 2024, Gazprom's outlook is more promising, although the country will demonstrate profitability in the wake of the challenging market conditions of 2023. I mean, it's going to boost its pipeline gas exports to Europe by 3 to 6 billion cubic metres, and it'll be between a 33 and 40 billion cubic metres. Meanwhile, the average price for the gas is going to be 380 to 400 per thousand cubic metres, and that's dollars. So it might have cut deliveries by 60%, but it gets doubled the revenue it used to get for the supply. So there is a silver line in there. Plus, the additional shipments of several billion cubic metres are planned for Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and other places. So, I mean, plus China's increasing its purchase on the power of Siberia too, which will be another 8 billion cubic metres, but it's another 30 billion to add to the total. OK, that doesn't make up for the 90 billion uh, of cubic metres lost at the European market, but it's a start. Plus, the prices are reasonably good. Now, anyway, in 2024, the write-off of European assets will no longer be applicable, although the increased mineral extraction tax will still be in effect. Additionally, the domestic market is going to increase the gasification level, uh, hopefully by uh, around 80% by 2030. It would be unwise to think that that's going to make a big difference, but it's a gradual process and it is fixed income that is directed uh, as gas use industrially continues to grow. I mean, that's tens of thousands, of, uh, tens of billions of cubic metres of additional demand across Russia, rather than hundreds of billions, but it's still growth. I mean, this year the country's, uh, company's already received a net profit of 1.1 trillion rubles, that's the first half of 2024, which is around $15 billion. And that's not exactly chicken feed now, is it? Now, while Gazprom did report a strong performance in the first half of the year, it's not likely to say that the company fully coped. 
I mean, it's adjusted its free cash flow and it's not that much higher than zero for the six month period after uh, the various other prospects are taken into account. And its net profit in dollar terms was significantly lower than the times before the coronavirus crisis or the Ukraine. I mean, the gas sector revenue grew by 9.3% year on year with the oil sector driving the main increase in revenue due to higher ruble oil prices. You know, the recovery of export volumes from the low base of 2023, the increase in supplies to China and uh, Central Asia, plus the weaker ruble, uh, will compensate for uh, a lot of the problems. Now, analysts project that Gazprom will have a significantly higher probability of generating profits in 2025. It will likely cease to pay the increased mineral extraction tax because there's no extra profits. And that's not included in the Russian draft budget for next year from the Treasury. So that will have a positive impact on the company's economic performance. And of course, the company is unlikely to deteriorate further. Uh, I mean, it's unlikely that the Ukrainians are going to stop the um, <coughs> transit of gas from Russia. I mean, they might want to, but Austria, Hungary and others don't. And they, nobody's going to benefit um, if they, they stop it. So I'm pretty sure that the EU and the US will exert pressure on the Ukraine and say, let the gas go. All they have to do is no need for an additional commercial contract with Gazprom. It can do the transit with capabilities through just holding auctions. So Austria says, I want to buy the gas, so it does. Hungary says, I want to buy the gas, so it does. So it ceases to be Russian gas when it hits the Ukraine border. Um, so that's the way around that. I mean, mineral extraction tax will allow Gazprom to generate free cash flow, alleviating concerns about its financial position. In fact, its financial position has never actually been that bad. It didn't lose money from gas at all of the pretty much was the paper losses and the writing down of exports. I mean, it's going to be challenging for uh, Gazprom to achieve dollar dynamic profit levels prior to 2024, but that really has no impact on uh, Russia whatsoever. I mean, Russia still doesn't mind anyway, as it's earning from non-energy and non-resource exports are growing rapidly, while Europe has not benefited at all from, in fact, the reverse from Russian gas. I mean, Europe suffered much more than Gazprom's paper losses with its economy is destroyed and its citizens impoverished. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website scobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button. And don't forget the comments section. Love to hear your comments, love to read them and love to respond to them. Thank you.